Hello and welcome to JHEP's lesson on determining enthalpy changes from surroundings. Um, in your OCR book, it should be page 150 something, I'm not entirely sure. Um, it should be under 2.3.5 on the top hand side of your book. So, um, the first thing you need to know is that we need to be able to find out what the enthalpy change is from a reaction to a product and we have to do that by using a thermometer and we can't really put a thermometer inside the bonds inside the system so what we do is we measure the temperature change in the surroundings so like for example we've got this horribly drawn uh uh, B car and then we've got we've got a product formed here this product this red thing here is the system and the surrounding is the beaker full of water so what we do we place a thermometer inside it and we check the temperature change okay so there's a couple of things that you do you do need to know we need you need to know how to calculate enthalpy change. You need to remember that it is Q, which means enthalpy change, equals M, which is the mass of the, um, of the solution, times C, which is the um, specific heat capacity of the, uh, what's it, of the solution, times delta T. Now, delta T, T stands for temperature. Delta means change or the range of temperature. So this is basically telling us that if we had the initial starting time, which um, the initial starting temperature, which is like 10 degrees Celsius, let's just say it's 10 degrees, and the final, um, the final temperature being 40 degrees Celsius, the delta T, the change in temperature, is of 30 degrees Celsius because 40 minus 10 equals 30. Okay, so one thing that you also need to know is that we need a specific amount of energy to raise one gram of a solution of a liquid of water by one degrees Celsius. And that is our specific heat capacity. And it is usually 4.18 grams per Kelvin. Sorry, let me just write this grams minus one per kelvin minus one the k might not even be kelvin <laughs> anyways so this is how much is needed to raise one gram or one milliliter of water or liquid by one degrees celsius and they will usually give you this in the exam okay lucky you but they will not give you this equation in the exam so you need to learn it and you need to know that the results will give you it will give you is in joules so if you're going to calculate the enthalpy change you might want to convert that into kilojoules at the end okay that's a little thing that you just need to remember so let's just um, go on to a worked question over here this is from the OCR booklet um, 193 so an excess of magnesium is added to 100 um, centimeters cubed of 2 mole per decimeter of um, copper sulfate the temperature increases from 20 degrees Celsius to 65 so the first thing you can do over here is actually calculate the Delta T because we've got an initial an initial starting point a final ending point or final point we can um, find the range or just minus the uh, the final we minus yeah the final minus starting so that'll be 65 minus 20 to make 45 degrees so we know that that is delta t that is delta t that is the change in temperature because it's gone from it's changed by 45 degrees by positive 45 degrees it might help if you draw the positive you don't, you don't really need to um what we want to do here is actually write out this equation so an excess of magnesium, so magnesium, Mg, that's going to be a solid. You don't need to learn how to, to write out the equation, but you do need to for unit 1. So if you're going to retake unit 1, I suggest that you follow this. So an excess of magnesium, 
magnesium is added to 100 centimeters cubed of two moles per decimeter cubed of copper sulfate. So that's CuSO4 in an aqueous form. <clears throat> and that would make Mg. SO4 because the copper and the magnesium are swapped places, they've displaced each other. That's going to be in an aqueous form plus copper. And that's going to be as a precipitate, as a solid. So we've got the delta T over here. We've got the concentration over here, which is 2.0 moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, what I usually like to do, I usually like to um, write the information I've got and then label it. So what I've did here, I just labeled it as C. C in this case stands for concentration, not specific heat capacity. Okay. So and the next one is hundred centimeters cubed, which is the volume. Now, the first thing we need to do is to find the energy change. And what we do is we write out. We write out the equation, the general formula, which is not even that, it's Q equals MC delta T. And we can replace it. So M, M is the mass of the product. We've only got a mass, we've only got the volume of a product. But in solution, one gram of a liquid equals, well, if it tells you that the density of this is um, is one gram per centimeter cubed, I should have written that down. Sorry, one gram per centimeter cubed is basically saying that it's like a, it's like water, and one gram of water equals one milliliter of water. So if the density is one gram per centimeter cubed, that means we can change the grams to milliliters very easily. So this will be 100 grams. So we've got 100 grams times C. C is the specific heat capacity. The specific heat capacity is 4.18 um, joules. 4.18 joules per grams per um, Kelvin. And the delta T is 45 times positive 45 if you want to write that. And if we calculate it, we would find out that the answer is positive 18810 or 18810 joules. So that is that is the energy change in the surroundings. So in that surrounding, in, in the water bucket, it has gone up the energy needed to raise that water solution by 45 degrees was 18,810 joules. 18,810 joules was needed to raise that temperature from 20 degrees to 40 to 65. Okay. So that means in the system, it has lost 18,810 joules. So in the system, this, that's why you should always write in the system, equals minus 18,810 joules. Now, what we need to do, so we found out how much energy was needed to raise the temperature up, and we found out how much energy was lost in that system. What we need to do now is to find out the amount of the solution that was reacted. Usually, if we knew how much magnesium we had, we could find it out through there, but since we don't, because it says an excess, since we don't know what that solution is, what that, sorry, not the solution, what the mass of it is, we have to use the solution. We need to find out how much of this solution reacted with the magnesium. So what we do is we use the formula, the, um, we use the N equals C times V formula. And we rearrange it or well if it's in decimeters cubed obviously if it's in centimeters cubed we will have to divide it by a thousand so this is very messy you will see times v in centimeters cubed divided by a thousand 
Okay. So, C, that's a concentration. The concentration, it was 2.00 moles per decimeter cubed. Do we multiply it by the volume, which is 100 centimeters cubed? Or, or if you want to, you can change the 100 centimeters cubed into decimeters, which I would usually do for unit one, and that would be 0 0.1 decimeters cubed. But let me just leave it as this. It's in, I think it's in the book as well. So 2.00 times 100 centimeters cubed divided by 1,000, that would give us 0 0.200 moles. And that is how much reacted with the magnesium to raise the temperature by 45 degrees. So the next thing you do is you write 0 0.200 moles was needed to raise the temperature um, by 45 degrees and it needed 18,810 joules. Okay, remember we're still in joules, not kilojoules just yet. Sorry, minus 18,810 joules. Always remember your signs when it comes to enthalpy, please. And so therefore, we need to find out since the, um, the molar the, the molar ratios, where is it? Since the molar ratios is all one to one, as you can see here, all one to one, we need to find out how much one mole of this solution of copper sulfate would actually, um, what's it? How much would actually raise the temperature of the solution? So what we do is we write one mole and we find out how do we get from 0 0.200 moles to one mole without adding or and um, without adding or subtracting. Uh, we multiply it. Okay, when when you ever, whenever you see something like this where you've got the moles on one side and the joules on the other side, you should automatically know that you never add, you never subtract, you either multiply or you divide. So you times it by five. And whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. And you multiply that by 5. So minus 18,810 times 5 makes minus 94,050 joules. Okay, so we're almost there. This is in joules. We want it in kilojoules. Okay, in the exam, they might ask you for kilojoules. Luckily for you, by the way, they're going to be, it's going to be in steps. In A2, they won't, probably won't be any step formula, but the first thing they'll ask you for, they'll ask you for this, and this will be worth like three marks. They'll, um, not all of that. They'll ask you for, uh, right here, there. They'll ask you for the energy lost in the system, or the energy gained in the system, you never know. And then they'll ask you for the moles that was reacted that would be usually two marks and then they'll ask you how much the enthalpy change is the empath the, the delta the, um, the delta h change is for this reaction and that's what we're doing over here and this is one mark so and the, the units will probably be in kilojoules so to convert this between joules and kilojoules we will divide it by a thousand okay kilo means a thousand so minus 94,050 divided by 1,000, and that will give us minus 94.05 kilojoules of energy. So to sum up, we would write Mg, which is a solid, plus copper sulfate, which is, a, um, which is in solution, goes to magnesium sulfate, okay, because they've been replaced, they've been displaced, which is in a uh, solution as well, plus copper, which is um, solid, and then you write delta H equals minus 94.05 kilojoules per mole. Okay, remember we did it per one mole, that's why we've got this unit. We did it per one mole. So for each mole, we're using minus 94.05 kilojoules. We're using 94.05 kilojoules, okay? That's why we've got the per mole. That's why you should be careful of it.
And that is it for uh, enthalpy. Oh, this is a an exothermic reaction. So that is it for um, that is it for determining the enthalpy change using the surroundings.